Hi, I'm Colin Sanders from Colin's Beauty Pages, and welcome to the Story of Cosmetics, sponsored by Artful Teasing. I am going to be telling the story of the different ways people have decorated themselves and attempted to make themselves more beautiful over the years. I have more or less carte blanche on this and I'll see how it develops. I'd love to get your feedback about what you'd like to hear about as I go along and I can steer it in whatever direction people might like to guide me. But I think that our appearance is something that is so fundamental to our lives that using that as a lens through which to look at history might be a lot more illuminating than you might think. So let's start at the beginning since, as the song says, it is a very good place to start. And when I say the beginning, I really do mean the beginning. Archaeological finds have indicated that we've been using makeup for a very long time. In fact, we may well have been using makeup for longer than we've been human. Our story starts with the Neanderthals. Neanderthal man was a breed that is rather hard to categorise. Some experts regard them as a subspecies of modern humans, but most see them as a separate species that branched off from our common ancestor more than half a million years ago. It isn't known for certain why they died out, but competition from our ancestors seems very likely to have been at least a factor, and probably the decisive factor. It is a great shame that they aren't around anymore because they sound fascinating. They were larger and stronger than modern humans, with probably larger brains. There are indications that they generally had red hair and spoke in high-pitched voices. They may well have sung, given that what might be a flute was found at one archaeological site. The idea of a Europe populated by singing gingers really does sound rather appealing. It would be a bit like a Mick Hucknall theme park. Whether or not it really is a flute is disputed, but there is pretty strong evidence that Neanderthals used cosmetics. Finds at a 50,000 year old dig in Spain reveal coloured mineral pigments diligently collected and meticulously arranged on oyster shells. The diggers seem to have found an ancient makeup bag. The items that were dug up in 1985 give us a vivid picture of what the fashion conscious Neanderthal looked like. Cockle shells were found with holes in them which must have been for either necklaces or bracelets or a matching set of both in all likelihood. Nearby was an oyster shell containing pigments. 23 years later, at a nearby site, scallop shells were found containing red and yellow minerals. The original find was re-examined and found to contain lepidocrosite, hematite, pyrite and charcoal. All of these are vividly coloured materials but have little else in common and so it seems almost beyond doubt that they were collected for decorative purposes of some kind. The most intriguing mineral found was natrogerasite, which was used in cosmetics by the ancient Egyptians tens of thousands of years later. Was this a continuous tradition? The dig in Spain is from a period when modern humans had already existed for hundreds of thousands of years, but probably before they had had any direct contact with the Neanderthals in Europe. It is an open question whether there were any cultural contacts between the two groups later but it isn't totally impossible that the early humans coming into Europe picked up makeup tips from the species that was already there, in which case the modern cosmetics industry might well be able to trace itself right back to pre-human origins. So what were the in colours 50,000 years ago? Bright reds and yellows seem to have been the order of the day. The pigments have a pearlised appearance and would look rather glittery, reminiscent of the kind of look that wouldn't look out of place on Lady Gaga. Graphite was also found, so black was part of the palette as well. Eyeshadow might well have been de rigueur for the Neanderthal about town. It's interesting to speculate that the people we have long regarded as primitive cavemen might well have been not so much ignorant club-wielding oafs as dandified and dedicated followers of fashion, sporting this season's colours and wearing the latest up-to-the-minute accessories. Well, I hope you enjoyed this first episode. Please let me know what you think in the comments and uh, don't forget to visit the website for the sponsor, Artful Teasing Fragrant Gifts. I'll go away and start working on the next one. In the meantime, thanks for listening.